And you're right. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. We are now recording. We are in great shape. Uh, we're going to talk about the psychology of success. How important is success? Uh, our own mind, how we feel about ourselves. How important is that to our overall success? What do you guys think? Very. 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 Everything. Everything. What do you mean? Give me Alex. Amir, I'm getting background from you. Okay. Or somebody else. I'm, I hate to mute everybody because I love you guys to participate. But if you have background noise, please mute yourself. Otherwise, I got to mute everybody, which I'll probably have to do as more and more people come on. I'm going to get right into this. Um, I spent a little time on this. Um, original artwork, okay? <laughs> um, Beautiful. I, I love, I think part of uh, per, success is very personal. I think there are some consistencies in success. There are some things that I do uh, that have worked very well, that have worked very well for me. Um, I want to share those with you. So I'm going to go right to the share screen here, and then we'll have some conversation, and then we'll also go to open forum if you have any questions. Okay? Does it sound good? Where is everybody? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But if they're not here, they'll get the recording. <laughs> and they're probably Okay, let's go right here. I'm going to go right to my mind map. And you guys tell me if you can see my screen okay. It's okay. Okay, good. I can see it. Great, thank you. Thank you. And if you do have background noise, you're clanking against your microphone, mute yourself, please. Okay. You, lose, you lose points for penmanship. Points for... <laughs> it's okay. I, look, it's, listen, this is for me. I think one of the most important things I do, and this goes to environment, okay? I like to create an environment of success. I like to use the right tools for success. I like to, I'm, I like to use the KISS method uh, for success. One of the most important things I do, I do um, I've studied successful people all my life. You know what they all do? They write shit down. Here, I write, I have a, um, this is my, I'm going to show you my collection of books here. Um, I always buy a bunch of these from Walmart or whatever. I write, every day I write things down, my notes, things to remember. I put post-its in there. Let me take this little paper clip off here. Um, I put in all kinds of notes, mind maps, reminders, all kinds of things. I write things down. Why? So you don't forget. You don't forget. Did anybody here ever have a brilliant idea and forgot it? Okay. All the time. I do. One of the habits I've gotten into is just um, on my desk here. Um, I have post-its. I have uh, my little minions. I love minions, by the way. My a notepad. Um, uh, I write, I write uh, stuff down. Keith Rich. Keith Richards used to keep a notepad by his bed and he woke up in the middle of the night and wrote three, uh, he wrote the, the beginning notes to satisfaction in a dream. He woke up, wrote them down, went back to sleep and he got up in the morning and he had no idea what he had next to him. And it was satisfaction's opening. My mentor, Max, uh, my good friend, departed friend, Lonnie Scruggs, um, he wrote uh, about mobile homes and things like that, wobbly boxes used to call it. He used to always carry a little notepad. This is the, this is the mini version of this. I carry this, I have it in, I have these in my car. Sometimes I go running with these. Do you ever go exercise? Do you guys ever exercise and get a great idea? Do you ever wake up at two in the morning and have an idea like uh, David was just telling, write it down. Don't forget it, save those brilliant thoughts. Um, I have um, all these, I use uh, pads like this. I have, um, I love uh, moleskins. You guys familiar with moleskin pads? I have them all yeah. right to left. Um, I have the ones that open upside down, like uh, reporters use. I have the mini travel one that I take on airplanes and stuff like that. Um, I write stuff down. Let me show you guys something. I hope you can see my screen here are just my notepads from the last, um, I'd say, 18 months or so, 20, 20, 18 to 24 months. 
Can you see that? That's where, that's where the books come from. Ideas for books, uh, ideas for marketing, things like that. Save those, save those ideas. Write them down. Successful people create an environment of success. If you wanna, if you wanna be a winner, you've got to, What do winners do? They, um, they're constantly learning. Um, they act so I, like. Oh, go ahead. So I have a question. Then my question is: Do you have your very first book when you first start out with your mentor? I'm. I i do not know what you. You mean my notebook? Yeah, the first notebook that you had when you was um, training with Max. I have some notes that go back. Um, they go back a, way, a long time. Um, I'd have to dig them out because I got a lot of stuff in storage and in boxes and stuff. But the answer to that is yes. I'm a okay. pack rat. I'm a pack rat. I save these things. When I when I was when I'm around somebody who's smarter than me or doing something better than me, I write it down. I listen. And Philip, that goes back to that environment of success. If you want to be a winner, hang around with winners. Listen to winners. Read winners. How many of you read a book? Listen to audio books. I listen to an audio book every week. Okay. Some, uh, I, just, I, I, I take them out when I am go running. I'm a member of Audible. Audible. Um, I like to listen or ask questions of winners or people who do. When I meet somebody who's in another business and I know they're successful, I pick their brain. How did you get there? What did you do? What were the challenges? What were the failures and setbacks and things like that? Um, so hang around with winners, read them, watch them, listen to them. Uh, podcasts. How many of you are addicted to podcasts? Uh, I, I listen to YouTube a lot. Okay. I listen to YouTubes every day on um, people who are successful, things like that. It's just, you've got to put yourself into that environment. It's self, it's self motivating. Um, absolutely. Let's go back to some of the other things here. Um, high self esteem. How do you feel about yourself? Do you like yourself? Um, are you positive? Are you upbeat? This is, you want to stay in that. You want to back to the environment. Are you hanging around with positive, successful people? Or are you hanging around with a lot of whiners and, and um, complainers? Or people who are just unhappy in life? What are we seeing, not to get political, what are we seeing on TV in a lot of cities right now? We're seeing a lot of unhappy people. Okay, I want to be around positive people uh, people who do, you got to do something. You've got to do something that you, you are passionate about. Okay. Something that you enjoy. If you, uh, you know, if, if you don't, um, if you're in real estate and you don't love real estate, you don't like helping people, putting people into homes, helping solve problems in real estate, financial problems, marketing problems, sales problems, buyers, sellers, investors. If you don't enjoy that with a passion, you're in the wrong business. How important is passion in, in your business? Very important. Um, I, studying successful people. Let me share with you guys a few books here. Um, I, years ago, um, I was at a seminar and I got to meet a really great guy. Uh, was in San Diego, by the way, and he lives in San Diego. I think he's like 88 years, 89 years old now. Uh, Dr. Dennis Waitley, I posted, oh, um, if you Never haven't heard. read The uh, Psychology of Success of Winning, um, it's a really great book. And uh, I met him, we were both speakers, and I got to talk with him on the, a while in the green room in the back, and what a great guy, what a positive guy. He was in the military, he had a psychological degree. And this is a guy, you know, even for t just to talk to a person like this for 10, 15 minutes, um, it, it, it's just so motivating. Um, probably one of my favorites is Brian Tracy. Um, Brian, um, not that this, uh, this isn't one of my favorite books, but it's okay. It's a sales book. Brian Tracy on YouTube has the psychology of success in audiobook. It's free guys. It's a four hours long. I suggest, I urgently stress that you should listen to it. The Psychology of Success by Brian Tracy. If you're playing music, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, if you're, The Psychology of Success 
uh, is one of the best audio books I've ever listened to. Uh, and it's for free on YouTube, once again. Um, an oldie moldy goldie, I talk about this guy a lot because he was in real estate, Robert Ringer, looking out for number one. Very good book. It was a bestseller. I think it came out in the 60s or something like that. It's, a, it's an oldie, but you know, the philosophy, the, uh, the, the rules that he has in here um, are just, um, they're brilliant. Everybody has a slightly different take on it. I even wrote a book on success. I wrote, it's a novel. Who's the author of that one? Sorry, Claude, sorry to interrupt. Who's the author of the last one you showed? Uh, Robert Ringer. Robert Ringer, thank Robert you. Robert Ringer, looking out for number one. He also wrote another book called Winning Through Intimidation. It's not as brutal as it sounds, okay? Don't take it literally. Ringer, like a R-I-N-G-E-R, very good book. Um, I even wrote a book. Um, I, I, I wrote this, I don't even know, 20 years ago now? The Mentor Teaches Success. It's a story. If you haven't read it, um, it's in your package, or you can buy it. If, for those who are going to, if I'm going to, um, you can buy it on my webpage, claudiamond.com. But um, I wrote a story about meeting a mentor and how it profoundly changed my life. You guys know that story. I've, I've spoken to it about it quite a bit. So part of that environment or the tools of success, write stuff down, listen to success every day. Why do you guys think I love teaching? Someone take a guess. What do you think happens when you teach people? When you teach people? Keep you sharp. It keeps you sharp. Why? Go, go deep on this. Because in order to it to other people, and that gives you a better understanding. Right. People bring new ideas, new concepts, new information. They challenge you all the time. Are you being challenged every day? Okay. So teaching other people. Um, is a great way to learn. Uh, being in clubs and environments with other successful people. I went yesterday, I took a run, and every day I'll share a little personal story. I take, um, um, I, I usually end up at a, my favorite little coffee shop. It's about three and a half miles away. Uh, I'll run there and then I'll run back home. That's an easy way to get in seven miles. I'll stop in, get a coffee. I have an account there, so I don't even have to carry money. They have very clean bathrooms. And I know the owner of the shop. I've known him for over 24 years and everything. And he used to be a contractor. And he never liked, and, and now he owns two coffee shops. Uh, he made a complete change in his life. He wanted to put down the hammer. And I love talking to people. Like, and they're very successful, by the way. A uh, very successful uh, uh, entrepreneur adventure that he took. And I love to ask him, Why did, what made you go from building houses to opening up a coffee shop? And he said, well, I, I just liked the, sh I, knew the um, I knew the former owner. I liked going to that shop. Uh, I like coffee. And he put all his passion into it. Do you need passion to be successful? Absolutely. Yeah. How about, um, do, you need, do you need to take risks to be successful? Should you be a risk taker? I don't mean jump off a bridge with a bungee cord, okay? I mean, but do, do successful people take reasonable risks? If you've done your homework, if you've studied other, what other people do and how they do it, and you're doing it honestly and ethically, is it okay, to, is it, is it okay once in a while to go, go for it? How if many it's people, an educated risk. Say again, Sean? If it's an educated risk. An educated risk, or just... Did, did anyone here ever have a devil and angel on the shoulder? Do you know what I mean by that? It's where the devil says, don't do it. Go ahead, Claude, do it. Go, go for it. Pick up that phone. Call up that person. They may, you know, and then the angel says, no, don't do it. They may not like you. They may reject you. And you've got this struggle of conscience going back and forth and back and forth. But you know in your mind, what's the worst that could happen by picking up a phone and speaking to another individual about their house for rent or for sale? Or a prospect who um, you spoke to six months ago. What's the worst that could happen? Is that a reasonable risk? You better believe it. You better believe it. That's why, what do I say to you guys? Everybody says, Claude, what's your, what's your biggest secret of success? What is the no, one thing you can do to, to make money, to be, fi to be free? Talk and to what do I, what do, 
What is it, guys? I'm giving you a clue. I call you and make offer. Yeah. Is that a reasonable risk? Is that hard to do? No. You got to take risks like that. Um, you got to be. You got to have a feeling. Part of success mindset psychology is you got to be have a great desire for independence or or freedom. How many of you do love want to be, have had jobs you hated? You did. You the ability to to be whatever you want to be. Okay, the ability to. Um, uh, let me try to get to my screen here. I wrote I wrote some good notes down here. with me you know, you know the ability to do what you want when you want it with who you want it okay that that to me is is, is so important is so important the the freedom to, to to just do what you want to do in life anybody here ever had a job or a boss they didn't like it's horrible isn't it Awful. It's it's awful. Can you, you ever anybody here ever have a job where you're watching the clock all day long? It's toxic. It's hot. It's isn't it the worst? You, counting down the days until Friday. Have we all had a job like that? Okay. When you have when you do something you love, and you can run the business, you can take a nap. Or the funny thing is about it, when you have your uh, when you have the responsibility of your own business and you're enjoying it. Sometimes you work too hard at it. You actually put in more time than you would at a, if it was a job that you were working for somebody else. How about, how about, imp, how about implementation? It can, can you talk about it, study it, think about it all day long? How soon do you want to implement it? How soon can you make five phone calls, speak to five people today? How soon can you do that? Right now, today. You have to implement things. You can't overthink of it. What do we call that? The paralysis of analysis? How many suffer from that? We have all these different, per you've got to, if I can get you to do that one thing, implementation. Not just study it, not just worry about uh, designing your business card for two weeks. We've designed about that, right? We've, we've talked about that, right? Working on your business card for two weeks. Gotta have that business card. I can't make any phone calls without that business card. I've got to have that web page set up. Uh, I've got to have my accounting uh, set up. Uh, I've got to have my CRM set up. No, all you got to do is implement. Pick up that phone, use your God-given gut sales skills and watch magic. Absolutely. How about confidence? How important is confidence? How much do you have to believe in yourself? In a world where there's a lot of negativity or maybe you're in a negative or toxic environment, how important is it to be confident? Who's going to be your cheerleader in life? Yourself. Just you. Sometimes you have. Sometimes you have to. And this is my university. Sometimes you have to fake it until you make it. Sometimes you just have to go for it. You you may not have all. How how many times do we go into a sales situation and we don't have all the answers to all the questions? Does anybody, by the way, no. But the thing is, maybe they'll ask you a question and you'll study it, you'll get back to them, you'll find it. In most cases, I find that I'm asked the same 10 questions all the time. When I do, whether I'm dealing with a buyer, a seller, an investor, I'm usually asked the same 10 questions. You know, well, how do I know my home's gonna be protected? How do I know they're gonna pay me on time? Who's gonna do the repeat? You hear these same questions all the time. After a while, through osmosis or repetition, you just, you just know. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it again and again. Um, let's talk about um, let's talk about gratification. Okay. And by the way, anything I have here, you guys can disagree with me. These these are kind of my thoughts, my ideas, of my mind of where my head is at. Gratification. Do you need a media? How important is it? Delayed. Most of the gurus out there talk. Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, Grant Cardone, they all talk about delayed gratification. You've got to work hard. You've got to put in your time. You've got to be patient. 
okay? And if you can see above there, what do I say? I'm, I believe impatience is a virtue. I, I shoot for immediate gratification. Why? Someone help me with this. What's wrong with me? Because we're in what business to make money today? Yeah, you know, that's one of my mantras. Thank you. Okay, if we're working and working and spending money and investing money and spending more money on marketing and we're going from guru to guru and we're not making any money, what's going to happen to our psyche? Down. Down? What does down mean? Help me out. Don't want to pick up the phone. Why? Not making any money today. Not making any money. How long can you work hard? Can you spend money and not get rewarded? You can't. I can't. I need that gratification. And I know there's a lot of motivational speakers out there. Hey there, give me $5,000 and walk on my hot car barbecue briquettes, okay? Okay. The trouble is you can have all the positive motivation, all the books I talk to you about, all the motivational speakers. You could list, listen to Les Brown, my favorite, by the way. I've always spoke about him. And if you're not going to the bank, what's going to eventually happen? Be honest here. You're going to quit and do something else. You're going to quit. So I'm... Flip hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. We've got to get rewarded for our hard work. I'm sorry, that's, I, I believe that to my core. Should you be patient and work on other things? Yes, but if you're, if you're working and investing and spending time and never get rewarded, how soon before you quit and you go to that next new little this thing? One today is fucking awesome. You're gonna have to, when I get it, I really would love it if you listen to it. I'm sorry, what did you say? Who's that? I'm not talking to you. Well, you're talking to about 30 other people. <laughs> okay so if you're talking uh, if you want to talk privately could you hit your mute button please <laughs> okay <laughs> um uh, but i do want you guys to participate and if you have a question or something please feel free to unmute yourself um absolutely leadership you've got to take you've got to take acceptance of your life you've got to be you know uh, you've got to have complete responsibility for yourself in your life. You can, um, and you guys can dis uh, disagree with me here. This is a little, this is very opinionated and subjective. I think when you, you know, you become successful when you take full responsibility for your life and your situations. I know there's external situations. I know there's bad weather. Uh, where's my, is my buddy Damon here? Damon, you're getting a new earth, a, n a new hurricane this week or something like that. I mean, this guy had to evacuate his house a week ago. There's fires. I, have, I still have a 14,000 acre fire seven miles away from my home. There's bad weather. There's uh, bad families and things like that. Is that, going, is that an excuse for you not to enjoy success in your life? Everybody gets garbage. Everybody gets a little rain in their life. But you either you can use that as an excuse and be a victim all your life, or you can say, you know what, that's not going to hold me back. I'm going to move forward. Nothing is going to stop me. It's a mindset you have about it. So there's so many different. It's a complicated subject, isn't it? Um, impatience here. Don't wait for things to happen. I think impatience is a virtue. Don't wait for things to happen. Make them happen. If you wait, if you keep buying lottery tickets, I hope you win but eventually somebody else is gonna win. The odds are not in your favor, but there are things in your life you can control. Hey, Claude? Yes. So you were talking about gratification, immediate and delayed. Um, what about like, how can we track and measure our success in terms of obviously calling five people a day? What are their like numbers or KPIs or anything like that? What, what really matters in terms of what we should measure? Do you have a bank account? Do you have a checking account? Yeah, of course, okay. but you know. I, I, me I'm, I, measure, I measure it on my bank account, okay? If I have, um, if my, in the old days, it's a great question and it's very subjective. It means different things to different people. There was a time in my life where I was worried about money. I was worried about paying the rent and bills and things like that. My objective in those days was getting, getting to a point where I had enough money to live, where I was not in debt, where I was not running up my credit cards and things. I, my next goal later on in life, 
Uh, I was married. I had a new baby. I wanted an extra thousand dollars a month. Okay. Young family. I was in law school. Uh, my Claudia's working. I needed that extra thousand dollars a month. And this is 30 something years ago. Just a, you know, just that little extra money, just to be, uh, get out of debt, uh, to, so we could go out to dinner once in a while or something like that. So I kept setting new standards, new goals all the time. And today I still, I have a chart on the wall here. I'm not going to show it because it's kind of personal. I have a chart that goes back um, about 15 years. Every year, every month, I, I put down how much I made and then I challenge myself to beat those figures. And by the way, this year, has been, and I don't understand it because I know a lot of people are hurting and suffering. This year has been one of the best years financially making money. Okay. I'm not mincing words here. Uh, it financially for my company in the last 15 plus years, since March, April, May, and June, we have had record setting months. If you talk to people in real estate, it's been very good. Uh, for a lot of people. So I measure it. I, I don't know if I'm answering your questions, uh, Alex, the way you wanted it, but um, I, I measure it by financially. Um, am I making the money? Am I making more money? Um, am, I, am, I, am I reaching my financial goals? Re set reasonable goals, by the way. What's, what's your, what, give, give me an idea of what you mean, Alex. What do you think is a, what do you think is a reasonable way to measure success? I was thinking the amount of people you call and the amount of contracts you send out and the amount of deals that you get. Okay. So, so I get people that come to me all the time and they say, gee, Claude, I want to do five. I want to do five. I want to do five deals this month. Okay. If you did five deals and you made a hundred dollars a deal, you made a hundred dollars a deal and you spent thousands of dollars on marketing and employees and overhead and everything. Is that sick? Are you still going to feel successful? No, no, that's a good point. Okay. So I don't measure, I measure it. Maybe this sounds very crass. I measure it by a dollar amount, set a reasonable goal. Say, you know what? I'm going to work a half hour, an hour every day on this particular goal, on my marketing, on my phone calls. I'm going to challenge myself to speak to five people today. I'm going to make offers. You cannot help but succeed if you have, if you are consistent in your, in your, in your work ethic, in your ability, in your routine. How important, so, so did I answer your question, Alex? I, it's very subjective, but I, I wanted to share with you how I measure it. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I know that you're getting ready to go and work on uh, routine next. So yeah, let's keep it rolling, man. Love yeah, that, the, thank you. What is, what is the routine? We've got to get into a routine. By the way, we have a special guest star here. We got Mr. Parker Thompson sitting there in front of his beautiful mountain there. And this is the young man I was talking about who went from, uh, can I ask you a question, Parker? Can you hear me? No, we have no sound from you. I'm sorry. Um, yes, I had to <laughs> there you are. take it off on you. <laughs> I, I was just talking about you. You're a, you're a Grand County success story. How did you go from being a contractor to owning all the coffee shops in the county? <laughs> all the coffee shops. <laughs> um, uh, I heard what you said about me knowing the previous owner, and that was certainly it. I knew they had a good brand, not just... Uh, good quality, but they had a, a good brand and it was worth investing in that as well. But one other thing is I knew I had uh, great employees already working there. And one of them was my daughter-in-law and she still is there. She's my general manager. So she got a promotion. Uh, I think a long overdue promotion, but Did she get free uh, when coffee? I bought it, I, huh? Did she get her promotion? Was it free coffee? <laughs> yeah, it's all about money, right, Claude? You know, that's it's, what you were just talking I about. <laughs> I think I don't want to sound crass. It's not all about money. Um, yeah. I love what I do. I, I, I my poor wife, she, you know, I told her, honey, I'm never going to retire. I love what I do. I love coming down here, talking to people, doing what I do. How important is passion in what you're doing, Parker? There's no doubt and about it. And I, I knew my my uh, daughter-in-law had the passion and a lot of uh, other people who are already working there have uh, the passion for their their particular kind of work so i knew i had a good thing going uh, when i bought that business uh i had a i had good groundwork to work with and uh you know we've upped the brand we invested we made some capital improvements we expanded like you mentioned i have two coffee shops not just one i'm a chain now 
<laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, you know, the location I'm, I'm was big. I'm it right now, by the way, Rocky Mountain, uh, Rocky Mountain Roastery. Uh, you are an awesome place. customer, Claude. <laughs> Uh, and so I think, you know, it was a calculated risk that I took. Um, it was a, but I had good people to work with and a good brand already established. Uh, I think that's huge. Um, uh, I think you're, you're uh, there and you're there all the time, aren't you? I, I'm in and out actually go between the stores and I have other projects going on, but that's why uh, I hired uh, or I, I promoted my daughter-in-law to general manager because I knew she had the skills. I, that would freed me up to do um, sort of like project planning, which I, I enjoy more. I have more pot passion for the project planning. Um, and uh, also I used my construction skills and the new build out at the new um, I saved a lot of money uh, with my construction skills, not just my own personal skills, but the contacts I have in the construction industry, being able to uh, hire subs. So uh, managing your capital is definitely a part of it. But uh, so, many passion different, so many is, different things you've learned along the road and the construction came in handy and, uh, and all oh, yeah. the other things. Yeah, you use every every um, use every skill in your bag, you know. When you exactly. own your own business, every every skill set you have, you try and improve new and develop new skill sets, perhaps if if it's relevant. But yeah, you use everything you got. <laughs> what about the fear? What about the risk taking? Was there fear in starting a new business? Um, yeah, you know, there, yes, absolutely. Um, we all have to confront fear in our lives, and as as I've gotten as I've gotten older, anyway. I'm not saying everybody should think this way. I've, I've come to think uh, instead of abhorring fear and trying to get away from fear, um, I embrace it with the, with the goal of managing it. Um, you know, the old saying is, you know, you, embrace fear. You, I love, I love that. What does that mean? Is that like, that a means, well, it's a sort of like a spin on the, on the um, uh, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. <laughs> I love that expression. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I embrace fear with the idea of being able to manage it. I keep it close so I know what my, my fear is about. Rather, uh, I think one of the scariest things in life is when you have no idea why you're afraid. And so, um, yeah, it would, there, were, there were a lot of things um, going on. But uh, someone said uh, earlier on, as long as your risk is educated, and I think... Uh, that doesn't mean fear goes away. It just means that it's managed. And that's a good example of uh, keeping your fear close and managing it is taking the educated risk and listing out, writing what looks so scary. And as soon as you see it on paper, you know, your mind, your subconscious mind almost starts just picking away at it without you really having to think and dwell on it. We don't know dwell on fear. We just want to observe it and manage it, embrace it. Bring it close so we can do something about it. I wrote down what you said, embrace fear. I'm going to put it on my master list here and everything. <laughs> Everybody, give Mr. Thompson, uh, I invited him, he, he came on. Give him a little round here for sharing. I, I like talking to real entrepreneurs here. And your wife's an entrepreneur too. She's been running a health food store for years, right? Yeah, we, we opened her store right in the middle of the recession, 2010. You talk about a fearful moment. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it, it it has really paid off. You um, said uh, yesterday when um, I met you during my run um, uh, at the store, you said something that's been sticking in my mind that you kept your store when the pandemic was at the worst part, when all the businesses in Colorado right. and around the country were being closed. You legally mm. stayed. You were able to stay open. And, yeah, it, was a, uh, and it was a great risk because nobody was coming was. in the store at that time and everything. Yeah, we we um, we said that instead of reacting, reacting from fear rather than managing, reacting would be, oh, there's nothing we can do. We need to cl close down our shop. We'll just end up losing more money if we stay open. Uh, rather than reacting, we admitted it's a pretty scary time, and uh, the restaurant industry uh, was especially where you saw a lot of uh, failures as a result of the whole COVID scene. Um, and so we just, uh, rather than 
uh, react. We wrote down a lot of what was pretty scary about the situation and figured out a break point uh, financially, you know, a number that we could accept and still stay open. And even though we got within a thousand dollars of that, um, we, uh, it, it turned around. And I think, uh, what you and I talked about yesterday was the customer loyalty. Um, we didn't even change our hours. We kept all our hour operating hours. And, um, uh, I, I think, people saw that in the community and uh, since we didn't have any tourists for a couple of months at least um you know we we had to really rely on the locals because we you know i i don't know if these uh, all your listeners know that you and i both live in a destination ski resort area and so it's uh you know you have you have income from destination resort people and you have income from locals and the locals are the ones that helped us uh, ride this out well, and cool. actually end up on top because we were the ones who were open when a lot of other businesses were shutting down. So well, you're, we, we a ended up of, you're a wealth of information. Thank you for sharing all that with you. I love, this is what I was talking about, being in an environment. Just, just for me talking with this gentleman yesterday, a lot of things rolled around in my head, a lot of ideas about success. So thank you, Parker. Really appreciate it. What about the routine? Let's go back to the mind map here before we run out of time because I want to still have time for questions, role plays, or open forum. The routine. I have a daily routine that I stick to. Okay, I have flexibility too, but every day I get up, I exercise, I read, uh, I read the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, I'm, uh, I watch face, uh, YouTube videos on success, I listen to audiobooks, as I said. Um, every day I work. Uh, every day I work at least 30 to 60 minutes on marketing, something I've stressed to you guys, 30 minutes a day, that may, even 15 minutes a day. Get st Do you ever notice, uh, all, who said it, Confucius, all journeys begin with the first step? I call it the five-minute rule. Can you, can you start doing something in your routine that is of benefit to you? for five minutes, whether it's, can you exercise? Can, who wants to exercise, right? But maybe go out and say, I'm gonna take a five minute walk. I'm gonna go out for two and a half minutes and turn around and come back in two and a half minutes. What do you think's going, what do you think you're gonna do if you're having a nice day, if it's a nice day and you're feeling good? You're, maybe you're gonna go 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Maybe you're gonna do five miles instead of a quarter mile. Same thing, making phone calls. Say to yourself, I'll make that one call, Claude, a uh, call, I'll make that one phone call and make Claude happy, okay? And that one phone call, maybe you'll get a nice person on the phone. That'll lead to two, three, four, five other people that you can make. You've got to develop a consistency, a routine every day. You've got to be an optimist, okay? Anybody here ever meet a sad sack? What, do you ever meet somebody and it's scary? You, you, the worst thing you can say to them is, how are you? And then they start telling you and it goes downhill from there, okay? Myra, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I saw your smile there. Um, the thing is, being, you gotta be your own cheerleader in life. You've gotta be an optimist uh, on that. Nobody's gonna do that for you. Your self-image, how do you see yourself, okay? Uh, do you, how do you perceive yourself? How do you think others perceive yourself? One of the things I always tell people is when you're talking to somebody, and you're having a good conversation, you're the adult in the room, you're asking questions, you're trying to get likability and trust, we call it also rapport. When you get off the phone, what is the perception that person is gonna have on you? Could you work to it? Please mute yourself, whoever has the kids in the background. Thank you. Um, on that, keep, um, have high standards, high expectations of yourself. Nobody else is gonna do this for you. This is the tough stuff, we, you know, we get, uh, it, life is tough sometimes. We get beaten up and stuff and you gotta lift yourself up and just do it yourself. That's why you wanna be always in that environment of talking to other entrepreneurs, reading positive things. God forbid, turning on the news every day might not help you get there sometimes. It might actually have the opposite effect because the news is not very good all the time. Discipline, you gotta have the, you've gotta, um, you know, You've got to say to yourself, this is what I need to do every day. If it's something you love doing, it's not that hard, is it? Sometimes uh, Claudia has to uh, drag me from the office down here, kicking and screaming, dinner's ready, come on. I said, no, no, I, I got to do, I need another 30 minutes. This is, you know, sometimes um, you've got to, you know, you've got to be disciplined. You don't want to be a workaholic either. But it's so funny, 
that uh, did you ever have something that you're doing and you're enjoying it, it's productive, you're making money, and the hours just disappear? Do you ever have that ha happen to you? I love that. I love that. When you look at your watch, you go, oh my God, it's dinner time. I thought it was, where did those four, three, four, five hours disappear to? Especially if they were really good, productive time. Um, you've got to be goal oriented. You've got to say to yourself, this is what I need to do, but set reasonable goals, set goals that can be achieved. I get scared to death when I get a new, a new client that I'm mentoring, I'm coaching. Oh, Claude, I want to go from, um, uh, $5,000 a month to $50 million a month. Well, is that reasonable? Is that practical? What are you going to do that's completely different in your life that gets you from that low number to that high number? Take baby steps. Take reasonable risks. Build, use building blocks. Um, I'm going to make this available to you guys. I'm going to do some more updating and stuff on it and clean it up a little. Um, let's go off this... Um, share screen here and go back to the regular screen. Uh, comments, suggestions, um, somebody wants to share their secrets of success. Hey Claude, I, I had a question real quick. Who uh -huh. is that? I, identify yourself. Uh, this is Franklin. Hi Franklin. Hey, how's it going Claude? Hey guys, just got a quick question. Um, with regard to the impatience side, what do you think about, how do you balance, <laughs> how do you balance impatience with Pers being persistent because don't you feel a lot of people, especially when they're trying to learn a new skill or get started on something that's that's kind of a challenge, they quit a little too early if they don't see instant gratification or instant results. So how do you kind of balance the need for instant gratification with um, the need to stick with something long enough to see the the results? Well, it's, that's a it's a great question. Um, it's a balancing act. It's uh, you want to do the one thing you love, the thing that richly rewards you. When you go to the cash register, oh, we had a good day. We sold a lot of coffee. Uh, oh, I did three contracts. Two came back signed with a wire transfer. I need that. Okay. I, I know that you've got to be deadly honest with yourself. And the word you use balance is so, it's so important. Um, yes, you've got to put in time to learn those skills. When did you ever get a topic or a subject? that you were fascinated about, you threw yourself into it, and for hours or days, you read books, you watch videos. How many, pe how many people here are junk? Uh, I'll give you a good example. Um, I, have a, I was interested in, when I was developing Guts 2.0, I was interested in the power of suggestion. I wanted to understand why people like me are so, when Claudia goes to me and says, hey, honey, we're gonna have grilled cheese and bacon sandwiches tonight. And I'll say, oh, that's what I want. It's in my head all day long. I'm drooling about that sandwich, okay? On the crispy rye bread with the crisp bacon and the, and the brie cheese and cheddar cheese and everything. Did I make you hungry? Um, the, thing, the thing about it is I wanted to learn that. So I, I took a course, an online course that should have taken me about three months. I got through it in two weeks because I wanted to. Um, okay. And, and I adapted it to my business. I offer, I use the power of suggestion all the time. I studied Milton Erickson. I read other books, listened to audio books. I totally can delve into a subject that I'm passionate or curious about and then implement it into my, um, uh, into, um, my, um, immediate gratification. Can I utilize it to make more money, to have greater satisfaction? It's very personal. It's very subjective. Um, you've got to be practical. Do you still got to pay your bill? Do you still have to pay your ca a cable bill and still put food on the table? Or are you going to spend all this time on something that doesn't produce money? Yes. Okay. How many, of, how many of us go from... Somebody's got the background noise. Please mute yourself. Okay, Tanner. Mute yourself next time, buddy. Um, so did I answer your question? I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. You know, I know that it's, um, it, it is a balancing act because I think a, a lot of people, especially, you know, who take a course, because similar to you, you know, you took a course and you were able to take a three-month course and knock it out in two weeks, you know, which is good. But I think a lot of people will take a course or buy a course, and then after a couple months, when they don't get the instant results, they'll say, oh, it didn't work. 
you no. got to you've got to be so deadly honest with yourself, you know? You've got to go to the bathroom mirror and say, "What do I what do I know about myself?" You know what, Franklin, you know what's the worst thing you can say to me? "Claude, we're having a 1-hour meet, we're having a 2-hour business meeting today about how to make paper clips." Right. Um, you know, I used to work for companies that had these long, long business meetings on Friday afternoon. I don't know about you guys, but what in, in July on a Friday afternoon, what are you thinking about? On a Friday afternoon in July, probably going home. Just going dinner. home, going to the beach, going out to dinner, starting the barbecue, going to the pool. I don't want beer with Claude. <laughs> beer with Claude. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you've got to be honest with yourself and say, you know what, what are you capable of? What is, what enhances your, your personality, your abilities, what works for you? I know me, if I, I love talking to a prospect and, and asking them questions rather than giving a presentation, what's your biggest problem, your biggest challenge? If we could solve that problem today that meets with your budget and your authority, and what you're looking to do. How would you feel about that? And please say no to me if this is not comfortable. How do you feel about that? And then they, they say, oh, I take an action, I do that. And we get into more questions and I get a commitment and we work out the finance. And then I give a presentation for the close and they say yes. And I get off that phone, I am two feet above the ground. I know that about myself. So are we being totally honest with ourselves in all cases? about instant gratification or long-term investment on, on our future? Sorry, you got me on a soapbox with that question, Franklin. It's a great can I, uh, can I just, uh, uh, I read this somewhere and I think it summarizes a little bit the ideas. Would you agree with um, be, in, uh, be patient with your results, but impatient with your actions? Does that work for you, Santos, Mr. Santos? I'm, wor I'm working on the I'm working on both sides, but I think that's that's uh, that's basically the idea. It's uh, don't uh, don't give it give yourself excuses not to do something that you know that you should be doing today every day. Be patient in that sense, but uh, don't don't be frustrated because it didn't happen today or or it's not going to happen tomorrow. Hey, uh, you know it's if if you're a God bless you if you are a patient individual. I know me, I've done things, okay? I always tell the story about uh, if I ever went hang, um, uh, skydiving, you know, I'd go up in the plane, I, oh, I can't wait. It's, oh, we're 30,000 feet and I'm, I'm gonna jump out of the airplane, I'm gonna free fall and I'm looking at the beautiful scenery and somewhere around eight, 9,000 feet, I'm gonna go, oh shit, did I put on a parachute? I, uh, you know, I, I, I know this about myself, I'm impulsive. Um, I've made, I've, and this, by the way, this type of personality can get you into trouble sometimes. You can make big mistakes, but I think there's a, there's a certain mindset or psychology to very successful people. Number one thing, I didn't talk about it, is, is failure necessary for success? Yes. Why? Because it's, it's the foundation, it develop, it's the building blocks that ultimately lead to success. I agree. I agree. Talk to any successful person. If they told you they were an instant success, they're full of it. I have had, I can't even tell you how many failures and setbacks I had. But what is the psychology of a true entrepreneur, true, a successful win, a winner? What, what is their mindset when they have a setback or a failure? Opportunity to try and give up. Go ahead. Uh, Alex, you go and then the other person goes. Failure is an opportunity to start again. Yeah. What do we, what, who was the other person who spoke? Press on. I'm sorry? Bailey was going to say uh, adapt, overcome, figure out a way to go over, around, under, through, just uh, use it as a stepping stone. What do you think an Elon Musk or a Steve Jobs when they have setbacks or failures? What do you, what do you think's their mindset about that failure? Learn from it. Learn from it. Very well said. Excellent. Go move forward. Press on. Press on. What do you think you should do? What should be part of your analysis from that failure? What did I do? What did I do wrong? How can, yeah. I, how can I fix how, that? How can I improve? 
Yeah. What should I do differently this time? What, how about, you know, going back to uh, creating an environment of success, which, when you study other successful people and you know, they're being honest about their setbacks, their challenges and everything, what can you learn from them? You learn what not to do. Yeah. What not to do. Do you think before you make a commitment to a project, spend a lot of time, money, resources, what do you think is the first, you know, this is the beauty of the internet. We all have the Library of Congress right on our, right on our kitchen table, don't we? Can we research people? Can we research what they did and how they did? I researched successful people, mostly in sales, in real estate. I found what is, the, what are the, and I call them one percenters. What do one percenters do different from the other 99%? And when you know what I mean by a one percenter, I mean someone financially self-sustaining, independent. They develop a system. System. I believe systems are good. Consistency, routines, positive habits. Absolutely. Action. Yeah, they're, co they're constantly testing it and improving and testing and improving it. Exactly, Ace. I know the one thing, I know I'm redundant sometimes with you guys, but I know that if I study and work on the science and art of persuasion every day, every day I read books, listen to things, I, you know, even from other people even, I practice, I, I experiment sometimes. Sometimes I say dangerous things, those guts moves we talk about, you're not allowed to think about it, okay? You know, why should I work with you? Well, maybe you shouldn't. I mean, I experiment all the time. I try new things. Are these reasonable risks? What's the worst that could happen? They say no. They say no. So what? Life goes on. But if they say yes, or they say, wow, you sound different. You're doing something different. Wow, you have a coffee shop with nice people who say good morning and hello, and we have clean bathrooms, and we have fair and reasonable prices for high quality. If you do something better or different, you think different. Steve Jobs used to say that all the time. How, how, important, is, how important is that to your success? Who's Go to the bank. Yeah, absolutely. Steve Jobs <laughs> said, my, one of my, I have it up here on my wall here. Um, it's one of, I'm a KISS method guy all the way. Um, and uh, Steve Jobs said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. What do you think he meant by that? Don't make it complicated. Sometimes the fastest way is to go straight. A lot of people try to put a lot of system tools and shiny objects and they get sidetracked. But the, sometimes the easiest way is just to go straight. Don't try to take a right to go straight per se. And if you fail, you learn. If you, and if you don't fail and you actually are successful, then you learn as well. Exactly. Things don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. Be fair to yourself. Don't beat yourself up all the time. Be tough on yourself. Have high expectations. Okay. Um, but, the thing is, but the thing is, be fair to yourself. Do something. In the, so success is pretty, what's our takeaway from this long conversation uh, from me on my soapbox here about success? What's our takeaway from this? Hey, Claude, I got something. Go ahead, Curtis. Um. If, if I really looked in the mirror right now, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like I hit burnout and I'm, I'm trying to reset myself, so to speak. Uh, it's kind of a spinoff on what Franklin said. You know, so many people put out here about instant success, but they don't really come into groups like this and explain what it really takes to get there. So when you do come across something where you really have to put work into it, by the time you get there, you're burned out because you're like, hey, it's not even supposed to be this hard. Everybody else says, hey, it's, it's going to happen in 30 days. It's going to happen in 60 days. So you get this mindset that if it don't happen in 30 days, it's not going to happen at all. And I've hit that. I went through every course you could possibly take. And, you know, coming across this group, you, Claude, and the group, everybody in the group, everybody that, that puts in every week, it's one of those things where I can, I've seen myself grow in a short amount of time. So thank you and everybody else in the group. It's just me looking in the mirror saying, hey, you know what? I really hadn't been putting in 100%. Uh, I've been putting it in somebody else's 100%, but not my own. How important is passion? Uh, Barbara Sinatar, one of my favorite books I talk about, do what you love, the money will follow. How important, 
I mean, if I told you that um, you would be a septic tank cleaner, if you know what that is, if you can visualize that, you've got these nice rubber boots and you're standing in, um, in stuff all day long. But I was gonna pay you, uh, I was gonna pay you a quarter million dollars a year, but you had to work 80 hours a week standing in stuff. Would you be happy? It depends at that point if you if your happiness is money, if it's your happiness is standing in crap all day. Listen, somebody's got to be a toll collector, okay? Did you ever wonder about people in other jobs? Did you ever think about it? Are there any toll collectors here before I offend all the toll collectors in the world? Okay, I mean, what's the highlight of your day, breaking a $50 bill? I, I mean, what? Does, do we even have toll collectors still? There's still people in those booths, right? Not right now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, Barbara Sinatar said, do what you love, the money will follow. If you love real estate, if you love the challenge of solving problems or whatever business you're in, because we have other people in many other businesses. And then when you're richly rewarded, you get a contract, you get a check, you get whatever, and you're paid for you and you're able to take care of your responsibilities. And I measure going back to what Alex said, Alex, the way I measure myself is do I sleep well at night? Okay, do I have a clear conscience? Is the cable bill paid? That's one of the ways I've always personally, that's the way I've always measured my, my success. Um, am I, or am I up at two in the morning worrying about the rent? Anybody, uh, anybody besides me ever been there? It's not fun, is it? Uh, absolutely, it's really nice when you're doing something you love, you're richly rewarded, you're working, and we, we have the tools today. Let's talk one more minute before we run out of time. Do we? Do we, is today the best day? Of the, have you ever seen opportunity like you have today? And I know there's all kinds of uh, reasons not to succeed, but do we have the most amazing technology? Can we talk to the world from our kitchen table? Okay, do we, 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 have, the, we have the computers, we have the Wi-Fi. We can, we can not only market in our backyard, we can market to the whole world. I have clients in 22 different countries now all because of this wonderful thing, the internet, putting out, uh, putting out marketing materials to attra virtually attract people. We've talked a lot about marketing, consistently putting out information so that people discover you. Are you a secret or does someone know you exist? Is there somebody today in your backyard who wants to buy a home, sell a home, invest in a home? And if they go to Google, are they going to find you? Are they? Make it easy for them. Use the tools. We have, uh, um, I've been ignoring the chat box here. Uh, the only job security you have is your confidence and your ability to make things happen. Absolutely. Dave Skolnick says, bacon grilled cheese. That's not kosher. You're right. Not unless quick, my quick wife. Question. Quick Go question, ahead. Claude. Last question. Quick question, Claude. Uh, I want to know something about when you, be, when you were starting. Were you doing something that you loved or you fell in love by doing something good, by becoming good at something that you fell in love with it. I, experiment, I, I experimented a lot. I tried a lot of different things. When I, when I was a kid, it was about go to college, get a, get a degree, go work for a company, and everything will fall into place. Guess what I discovered? I wasn't, I'm not a company corporate guy. There's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't suit my needs, my financial needs, my, my idea of freedom, going and punching a time clock or working for somebody else and, and or going to meetings on Friday afternoon. That's not who I was. So I experimented. I tried things. I started in a, a tool company. I used to sell tools. You guys ever hear a red arrow? You remember they sold uh, uh, brake lathes and, uh, engine lifters and stuff off the back of a truck. A friend of mine was doing it. He was making $1,000 a week. I said, let me try that. And I did it and I made a sale and I was motivated. And so I, I bought my own truck and I hired other people and I did that for a couple of years. After a while, it, got, it, was, I, it wasn't fun going out there knocking on doors all day long. Um, I did an um, imp, export import business. I had a newspaper business, okay, where I ran crews of people going out there knocking on doors uh, to sell subscriptions for major newspapers, the Newark Star Ledger and things like that. Um, I did all these different things. You've got to try new things till you find out. Um, I, I forgot who said it. To all things, I think Cyrano de Bergerac, uh, 
a novel. To all things to thine own self be true. You've got to find out what you love to do and make it practical. By practical, I mean, you know, you may love sitting on the beach all day long reading the latest novel, but is someone going to pay you to do that? No. I remember 30 years ago sitting with you going through the newspaper and putting little ads out. That was that was your marketing. Now, now today you're working from a box that you can reach everybody for free. Yeah. I put out videos every day. I work on marketing, doing videos, posting things in Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn every day. We'll talk about that maybe next week. Listen, you guys, give yourselves a round of applause. This was a great session. Thank you so much for participating and everything. You guys are wonderful. Go out there, be safe, have fun, pick up that phone, rule of five. And remember, nobody deserves success more than you good people. Have a good day. Have a good week. Bye-bye, guys. Let's get, let's get a little music going here. I need, to, I, need to, I need some tunes. Does music make you successful? Does it motivate you? Absolutely. 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 Let's get something. A satisfaction. <laughs>